This is Eruri, where epic comes in many forms. Nine mountain ranges, coastline for miles, acres of dense forest. Millions are drawn to this part of North Wales every year. But this is a wild landscape. Hello! Where the best day of your life can quickly become the worst. Police emergency, how can I help? There's a little boy trapped in the mountain. And when a call for help comes in, the busiest network of rescue agencies in the country must join forces. How did you get here? Professionals and volunteers side by side. Keep going. Each team bringing vital skills and local knowledge. Helicopter inbound. Of how to save a life in a landscape like no other. Two casualties from climate change and injuries. Life is good when people help each other. Peak times are extremely challenging. The roads are busy, the mountains are busy, the beaches are busier. Erari's usual population is just 26,000. So when summer hits and visitors flock here in their millions, it puts incredible pressure on the rescue teams. One emergency hotspot for the Coast Guard is Traith a Graig V, Black Rock Sands. Black Rock was the biggest place we've been this year. We've had probably 50% of our shouts. Its two miles of sand are well known for being compact enough to drive on which also makes it popular for extreme sports, like power kiting. But the fast incoming tide here has a habit of catching visitors out. It was a, a fabulous day. The weather was glorious. I, I took my kite out. The wind got up. I started to move a bit about on the sand. And then, crack. And I landed badly on my shoulder. Power kiter John urgently needs hospital treatment. But Traitha Graigvi is around 30 miles away from the nearest A&E at a Spitzig Winnev in Bangor. This call out needs a multi agency response. But right now, the ambulance service is dealing with a huge volume of calls and there's no rescue helicopter available. So the Coast Guard rescue team are first on the scene. No head injury or anything? No, it was, a, it was a power kite and I just, kite, it just yeah. lifted me on a gust and took me in the air, toppled me over and landed me on my shoulder. No, no other injury, no? Not I'm aware of. Because she was in quite a bit of pain, he hit the floor quite hard. He was just a total freak accident, but the sand there is like concrete. An off-duty doctor who has stopped to help suspects John has broken his collarbone. I am concerned if you move here that you could damage blood vessels, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nerves, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm pretty concerned that we can't actually get him up. He can't move. I don't know if there's more damage to the shoulder. He's got a radial pulse and he can grip my hand, but I am worried that he's starting to show signs of shock. The Coast Guard rescue teams are trained to care for casualties in an emergency, but aren't licensed to give pain relief the pain started to hit in my shoulder and the collarbone and the surrounding area. I did feel sorry for him. It's quite frustrating for us to sit there when people are in pain. After speaking to the doctor, I'm not that happy. I'm trying to move you into a car as long as you're fine there. So that's where we're at now, I'm afraid. It's not the answer you want to hear. Then, there's an update on the Coast Guard's request for medical backup. OK, how long is for the helicopter? 
Okay, I'll get back to you in five minutes. Okay, thanks very much. If they can't move him and he's in chronic pain, yeah. to get back to him and they'll try and move it up. 70 minutes wait for the land ambulance. Right. We will bring him again in a minute. You know, it's really frustrating. Yeah. It's important to get an ambulance quickly, especially into that situation where they could have had internal bleeding or trapped nerve. But being a busy bank holiday weekend, they were flat out. And there's a new time pressure developing. You're concerned when the tide's coming in. Yeah. So, yeah. The tide that day was on a spring tide. It was starting to come in quite quickly, so another reason why we needed to get him moved. The spring tide and today's southwesterly winds mean the team have less than an hour before the place John is lying is underwater. Already at this point, I had been on the beach for probably an hour and a half. I felt an inordinate sense of dread. They don't want to move John without pain relief but the decision may be taken out of their hands. Uh, you've got another three quarters of an hour, but he's got pins and needles in his hands now, so, and he's cold. We're actually on to the ambulance service um, and the Coast Guard and Helimed at present. Now, our concern was obviously sit him up, but he, he probably will pass out. He, you know, he is very pale, very nauseated. We're going to try and put him in our stretcher. And to make matters worse, the delays keep rising. The time for the ambulance has gone up to two hours now. Two hours from now? From now. <laughs> so we've got to move. If it's two hours from now, we've got to move. It's a very hard decision to make whether you move a casualty without pain relief, but it was a call that we, we thought was best. Don't think you can roll onto this side, no? No. 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 Okay. They're out of time. In too much pain to roll onto a stretcher, John must stand up and have his shoulder strapped so he can be taken to hospital by car. I dreaded the fact I would have to move. Any sort of movement then caused an excruciating amount of pain. Please, if, if it's too much, then, then, then say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really this shoulder that we need to. So help support your arm? I don't want to do this, but there was no other choice. You think that you're getting over some of the shock, it then hits you again. You feel like you're going to pass out. It's certainly the most pain I've ever experienced in my life. Two hours after his fall, John is finally on his way to hospital in Bangor, where doctors confirm he's broken his collarbone. Safe journey up. I didn't realise that the Coast Guard are volunteers. I am really, really grateful for the, the reassurance they bring for the work that they do. Ambulance delays like these are common across the UK, but Aruri's unique geography adds an extra challenge. It's a very rural environment. The roads are narrow, houses are few and far between. Where we are rurally in Snowdonia, it's a good hour's travel to hospital. There's certain areas, especially mountains, in the middle of fields, that we can't really get to with a, an ambulance. But we'll always ask for mountain rescue. You just know if you ask for mountain rescue to come and get somebody off the hill for you, that person's coming off the hill. <laughs> The 
But mountain rescue are also under huge pressure, with North Wales the organisation's busiest region for call-outs. People realised once they'd come out of lockdown, they needed somewhere to go. They've found all of these fantastic places we have, and they're returning, which is excellent. But the number of call-outs is increasing. It means volunteers must be on call 24 hours a day, every day. It is almost midnight. In the Ockwen Valley, two climbers abseiling down Trevan have got stuck just below Llwybr Grecis, also known as Heather Terrace. Love a good nighttime walk. If someone is in trouble and we are the only people that, that can go to help, even when you'd really rather be in bed. The rescue party Radio Base, who were in contact with the casualties. Yeah, we're on Heather Terrace now. Can we have a light and shout from the cast party, please? Over. Hello! I can hear something. Hello! Keep shouting! Stay where you are. Are you okay? It can be a very daunting place at night. We spend a lot of time in and around that area, so for us, it's just kind of an extension of our home. Yeah, OK, 245, yeah, we have uh, comms and we can see the cast party over. I'm going to go a bit higher and try and get a bit more level with them. Volunteer Mo leads the way, fixing anchors into the rocks for Steve and the team to follow. When you're on a job, emotions can run quite high whenever it's 2 o'clock in the morning and if you're stood on something very small and you're trying to move across some sketchy grounds. But you definitely have to just take a few deep breaths and trust in your team. Dom, I'm safe. Take me off. So you've got the last five metres of rope over. So these guys are just up here, look. Oh, yeah. Does it look like the terrain either side of you is traversable? No? OK. We'll stick another handline on. We can handline them across. Yeah, definitely. We decided that the best plan for us to do was fixing a handline all the way along and then bringing them back along to do one final abseil down to the Heather Terrace. We're going to set up a handline across. Over. You guys OK? Are you safe at the moment? Yeah. Uh, that's Mo with the two casualties. There you go. If you clip your safety line into that, we'll get you moving soon. Bit of nighttime abseiling. Abseiling back home to my bed. <laughs> So the initial call for the team had come through at around half ten at night. We were out in the hill and all finished at about four o'clock in the morning. And then it was time to get the head down and get a little bit of rest. But after just five hours of sleep, Steve was woken by a second emergency call on the same mountain. The message came up on my phone, feeling fairly groggy. I took one look at it and I kind of thought, ooh, should I go? <laughs> Day to day, I'm actually a student nurse at the minute. I'm in my third year of studying, so I'm getting close to the end of it. So it gives me a lot of free time, so to speak, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, it literally comes straight from work. Oh, mate, I literally just woke up after last night's job as well. Yeah. I've got the skills to help get someone out of trouble in the worst day, then I should probably go and help. Today's casualty is a walker from Kent who's broken his ankle. The Coast Guard helicopter is already on the scene. They've winched down a paramedic, 
but need the mountain rescue to help get the injured man and his family off the mountain. Right, Steve, I need you on the helicopter. We yeah. have quickly. Right, uh, get your jacket, get your helmet on, you're going on the helicopter. Steve and two others will be airlifted to the summit. They're walking towards the helicopter. There is always a bit of adrenaline. Your mind races. What am I going to need to do first? To follow. Out. Yeah, you get yourself comfy. You're not worried about anything else. You're like... It was very clear that the ankle was deformed. We had the luxury of having the winchman paramedic already dealing with the medical aspect. With his medical training, Steve helps the winch paramedic strap up the casualty's broken ankle. Are you right with pain relief, Rick? Good. I've got a feeling that there was a little step in it, so it might be what we call fracture, dislocation, it's popped out and yeah. broken and it's a bit of a mess. It's horrendous. Casualty currently in a back splint. Out. Is up and all sorted. Is that everything okay? Yeah, I think we're happy. Right, you've got to get the high line out then. Yeah. What they need from the ground is a high line, a rope that is held onto by the winchman that stops them spinning out of control when being winched. If I start spinning, I'll be looking down at you like that. I'll do my best. It's really windy, yeah, really it's noisy. Yeah. Just yeah. sort of put yeah. up with it for a bit. Once yeah. we get you in, I'll put you on the floor yeah, and then fine. shuffle back. Hey, thank you. Thank yeah, you so you. much. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. You're, you are amazing. I, I really respect Ooh. you all. Thank you so much. There was me thinking I'd have a day this week without going up Trafan. It's my second time this week, Nick. Second time in uh, 12 hours. Whenever the winchman and the casualties here get that lift off the ground and they're in the air, there is a, a feeling of relief. You know, the, the person's getting to where they need to be. With the casualty en route to hospital in Bangor, Steve and the mountain rescue team can lead his family safely off the hill. The family have seen something that's reasonably traumatic for them, and it's happened to one of their loved ones. We need to make sure that they are OK. Mountain rescue and the Coast Guard have been absolutely incredible today. They've all been our heroes. They're absolutely brilliant. I'm so grateful to them. At the end of this job, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tired. <laughs> but I felt quite happy that I was able to help someone who was in need, uh, and especially off the back of being able to help two other people the night before. Your leg was pointing that way, and I made it point straight again. Do you really don't remember all that? No. Oh. OK. Oh. Was it pentrox and morphine? Yeah, and paracetamol. And paracetamol. There was a rock that was angled out, and then I got my right foot caught, and the momentum, and I ended up getting my left foot then caught between some rocks, and my momentum carried it over, and my ankle stayed where it was. So, and I heard it snap like a twig. Mm. Yeah, and then it, and I looked down, and it was facing off the other way. So I said to them, yeah, you better get on the phone. We'll do as much as you can yourself, and we'll help you whatever you need to help with. So if you shuffle yourself over, get it a little bit just hold on there. To get two jobs within 24 hours, it's not unheard of, but it doesn't happen every week. This job happened really, really efficiently, and I think that just lends itself to this ongoing collaboration that we have between the different agencies. If we hadn't been called for this, there would have been absolutely no chance of him getting off the hill. Cheers. With every agency pushed to capacity, volunteers with medical training are in high demand. I chose to become a GP, but I always knew that just doing that job wouldn't be enough. The Mountain Rescue Organisation relies on the time and dedication of volunteers from a whole range of backgrounds. Teachers, tree surgeons, policemen, business owners. 
And I thought, right, I can make a difference here. A bank holiday to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee has seen tens of thousands of tourists pour into a rurry. A woman walking in the hills near Bala has fallen unwell. She's struggling to breathe and her heart rate is dangerously high. But she's on a rural track five kilometres from the road in the hills above Llyn Kellyn, where an ambulance can't reach her. We do tend to get the more complex jobs in the summer seasons with the rescue element put in as well. We wouldn't have been able to take an ambulance up to the patients at all, so we had to wait for mountain rescue. She's been walking 600 metres above sea level, up through the forestry behind us. As soon as our vehicles get here and our medical equipment, we'll be heading straight up to her. Local knowledge plays a huge part in all these kinds of rescues. We were able to access a forestry track that would enable us to drive to the summit of the mountain that, that she was located on. I had a pretty good idea before going. <laughs> something called supraventricular tachycardia, which is essentially a very fast heart rate where the electrical activity gets stuck on a loop and your heart beats away at least double what it normally would. Knowing that someone is experiencing a cardiac episode hastens your response. We just need to be mindful in terms of time uh, and getting our, our casualty the proper care that she needs. They're probably on the track, to be honest, aren't they? It's quite hard to rain to spot someone in, isn't it? That's kind of... It is, yeah. Yeah, if they're not immediately on the path, or <clears throat> they don't make themselves known to us, they might cause some concern. Get the window as well so you can hear them shouting. <laughs> Given the, the distance and the sort of the gnarly terrain, it took us the best part of 30 minutes to drive up to her. Meanwhile, GP Haley arrives at the roadside. So what's our plan? Where can we get her to? Down, back down here. Down here? Back down here. Okay. Down. Asked, but I'll be honest, but yeah. nothing else. It's probably going to be a while, yeah. knowing the ambulance so waits here. Yeah. yeah. in line there are four more pressing ambulance calls before us. The plan was an ambulance to meet us at the roadside, but of course they're a busy service, they won't come and wait. 
so they were carrying on with the jobs in the area and then waiting for us to update them. We are in a queue in the, the ambulance system. We don't have a, an ambulance allocated to us. You know, it might cause some concern for her, so we won't necessarily mention that at this stage. The location looks like it's in the next hundred or so metres. Yeah, we're just round the corner from I think so, yeah. where we could see. Yeah. They're there. Can you see them? Yeah, they're there. Ah, That's right ahead. Yeah. Right, good deal. We've just arrived with her now. My guys are making an assessment and yeah, we'll aim to load up uh, as soon as we can. It's just simply high heart rate. Yep. All we can do is put her on oxygen and get her out ASAP. Oh, right, sorry. Normal heart rate is about 60 to 100 beats per minute. This lady's heart rate was going 140 to 150 beats per minute. That requires hospital admission and specific drugs to slow that heart rate back down. Do you know? Yeah, um, that's fine. Well, I'm not going to be able to do Just spent to ambulance control. They have passed an ambulance. They can't guarantee that it will be there when we get down. Things can deteriorate in the time that it takes to get a person off a hill. I need to make sure that the team are, are ready for anything. The weather has started to turn now and actually quite dramatically in Gwynedd, Northern Wales today. Dramatic but localised storms are sweeping across North Wales and right now are only around 10 miles away from the mountain rescue team and they're causing havoc for the ambulance service. One minute it was nice and clear and the next minute you couldn't see further than the bonnet of the ambulance. The hailstones weren't like any normal hailstones. They were like golf balls coming down from the sky. In this situation, it's not safe to go fast on the blue light. Have you got a mobile phone signal here? Do you know? No. No? The storm is affecting the uh, mobile signal in the Frenna apparently. We knew that a big flash flood thunderstorm was coming we really needed to get her off. Finally, they've got the casualty off the hill. Casualty is down at the road now, being checked over by Haley. This lady's heart rate was going about 140 to 150, and she had some chest pain, which I hadn't known about before. She was feeling quite faint two of those features can increase the likelihood of cardiac arrest. Immediately, I realised there was increased urgency. It's been nearly four hours since the casualty first called 999. Still no sign of the ambulance. They are rushed off their feet. She's got some chest pain, basically. It's a pressure feeling, and her heart rate's at 140. Eventually, I let her pop up the hill for a wee, she wants your help out there. She felt really quite faint when she tried to walk just um, 10 or 20 metres, which was another alarm bell. We needed that ambulance now. Have upgraded to highest priority. Over. All I knew is that I needed to get this patient to the hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The ambulance arrived, and it is a relief. She's alert and um, but she still feels very dizzy and faint, and she tried to go to the and she had a collapse. The job's done, and she's going to the A&E department to get definitive care. We were really lucky to have Mountain Rescue there. We were also extremely lucky because there was an off-duty doctor within their team. At the heart of it, if we just want to help people get them out of difficult spots and make sure they live to tell the tale. <laughs> <laughs>